Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, I've ordered myself a new uh, Logitech Brio 4K camera to go over there in the booth. Uh, at the moment I'm actually switching this camera and this camera manually when I have to do recordings. Uh, so I'm looking forward to not have to do that anymore. Um, and since the camera will be arriving tomorrow I thought that uh, rather than switch the cameras today I'd just wait for it to arrive so I can plug it in uh, so looking forward to that um, and I figured in the meantime I'd just do a main show um, the main show uh, has three parts I do I do a project on the bench uh, and then I do an old book review or tear down I call it a little book tear down uh, and a new book tear down uh, so um, and th and that's a three a, vi a set of three videos that are all related. Um, I have the same silly job title for all three. Today's silly job title is Master Planner. Today I'm the Master Planner. So uh, I thought I'd tell you about which books I selected, um, and then we can pop over and do it and do an experiment. Um, oh, I also thought I might uh, just do an honourable mention. Uh, my latest uh, silicon chip magazine has arrived. This is April 2024. Looks like there's a, it's a thing called the Pico Gamer. So uh, that's, uh, that looks like it's going to be interesting. I haven't read it yet. It just arrived yesterday. Um, and the other thing that I might mention is I've been reading The Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics by Stan Gibalisco. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying this. Uh, it's uh, explained a few things to me. I mean, I'm not an expert schematic read, right, reader by any uh, stretch of the imagination. So, uh, looking forward to learning a little bit more about that. I'm about halfway through. Uh, I might, I might do a new book review of that book sometime, but not today. Today, uh, for the new book review, I figured we might as well, since the the first two, the only two new book reviews that I did were uh, The Art of Electronics 3rd Edition and then The Art of Electronics The X Chapters. I figured I might round off that set of books with the third book that I have in that series and this is called Learning the Art of Electronics, a hands-on lab course. Um, and uh, it was developed by a different author, uh, Thomas C. Hayes, um, with the assistance of Paul Horowitz who was one of the authors uh, of the other two books along with Winfield Hill. So uh, if you haven't seen them, um, they, uh, they're available on YouTube, the, t the new book teardown for the other two books. I'll, I'll link them in the show notes. Anyway, this is The Art of Electronics. This is the, the main game. It's a real monster. Uh, and then uh, this is The Art of Electronics, the X chapters, which have also reviewed uh, same authors, Paul Horowitz and Winfield Hill. Um, so I've already done those two, and I will be doing... Uh, the, the, uh, the, the textbook. I believe that this book, um, the, the Learning the Art of Electronics, it says a hands-on lab course. So I believe this is more textbooky. I'm not really sure. I haven't looked at it. But we'll find out together when I do the uh, teardown, which will be coming uh, out in a new video soon, following this one. Uh, and also, I'm going to do uh, this book here. Um, as my old book for the old book review and this is called uh, Frequency Modulation by A.W. Keane and it's literally about FM as in FM radio frequency modulation and this book let's see if I can get some vital statistics from it uh, published in London by Sir Isaac Pittman and Sons first published in 1958. So this book from 1958 talks about uh, frequency modulation. Um, and it looks like it's got a, a bit more than 271 pages. So nearly 300 pages. And we'll do an old book teardown for that. I might as well tell you about the, uh, the details of learning the art of electronics too. This is our new book. And it was published, uh, looks like 2016. So that's about one year 
um, after uh, The Art of Electronics 3rd Edition came out, which came out in 2015. And this says it's had, this is the seventh printing, printing with corrections in 2020. So my copy was printed in 2020 uh, and it had some corrections in the seventh printing. First published 2016. And the number of pages, according to where the uh, table of contents takes us. No, just trying to get the page there. All right, the index starts at page one thousand one hundred twenty-eight. So it's a it's a it's a it's a big behemoth, like um, like the the art of electronics itself. So looking forward to doing those two book reviews. Uh, they'll be coming out soon. And today, for our project, uh, I've got a little project box. It's got little hints and tips and things that I'm going to get around to doing with you. Uh, eventually. I thought today I'd just do this one. This arrived recently. I bought it. I have uh, a cable that runs over here labeled the roof aerial and this thing's connected to the antenna that's on the roof, part of the television, the old television uh, aerial. So um, uh, I, I had much success um, plugging my Maxitronics 10-in-1 radio circuits into this aerial. It actually uh, made the difference between the circuit working and not working, which was surprising because we thought it was just VHF stuff and it seemed to help even with AM signals. So who really can account for that? I don't know. I don't really get how it works, but uh, um, it did. It did help. So what I wanted to do was just make it easier to use those in future. Um, soon I'll be doing uh, um, one of the Maxitronics um, or two of them, in fact, I've got a, um, a Maxitronics uh, uh, diode, crystal, they're called a crystal radio, the crystals, the germanium crystal in the diode. So I've, I've, got a, um, I've got a crystal radio and I've got an AM FM radio, two radios to build. Um, and when it comes time to build them, it would be good if I could plug them into the roof aerial to see if that helps me get better reception. So what we're going to do today is make a cable. It's a very simple, humble little job. Uh, we're going to need some soldering. We're going to need some heat shrink. Um, we're going to need to cut and strip some insulation. And that's basically it. So um, uh, I'll throw you over the bench and, and, and let's make a cable. Actually, we're going to make two cables. We're going to make, uh, uh, we're going to make a, a female with uh, two um, alligator clips. And we're going to uh, make a male with two alligator clips. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use big uh, alligator clips or little alligator clips, but we can think about that together in just a minute. So let's throw you over to the bench and let's get on with this thing. There we go. Now, um, we're going to need... Uh, I'll put that light on. Light's always big. A bit of light's good. Um, we're going to need uh, both uh, um, the soldering iron bits and pieces. So uh, let's fire up the iron and we'll put the um, yeah, my hot air gun goes right at my cables which makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, knocked one off. Mm. Not sure what to do about that. Mm. I don't know. Let's just hope it doesn't create much of a problem. The issue is uh, my uh, uh, hot air gun points at the wall and it's right next to my um, BNC cables, a couple of them, and I don't want to accidentally melt those. Anyway, now look, I, you can see the evidence of another project I've been working on. I've been trying to get this um, uh, Arduino Uno, it's a knockoff, it's a knockoff, um, but I think it works. Arduino Uno to work with the, uh, the, um, the ICSP programmer for a couple of my um, AT Tiny 85 uh, microcontrollers. 
Um, so I've just been trying to get that to work. And I've also got this Spark Fun programmer, which I've been trying to get to work as well. Uh, but so far, not much luck on the, that front. And I've discovered MP Lab X, which is a uh, uh, integrated development environment for uh, for programming these types of chips. Um, and I, uh, I I might need to get myself a different program. And there's this thing called the Pick Kit Four, which looks like it will be a good choice. So. Uh, just thinking about that, um, but I'm kind of reluctant to spend too much money because I've spent a lot of money on stuff recently. Actually, I uh, I, I really uh, I made made a little bit of a mistake yesterday. I uh, <coughs> I thought my uh, my computer monitor over here, which I use for uh, for doing all the recording, I thought it had broken, um, and I, I I considered that an emergency. If if you don't have your monitor, there's so many like there's like four computers I can't use all of a sudden so I really needed a monitor so and I thought it had broken so I, I, I ordered one uh, straight away because I wanted it to arrive as quickly as possible so I could get on with everything and then of course after I'd uh, f fooled around with it a bit more I discovered that the power was knocked the power had knocked itself out um, so the the power I thought uh, I thought it was a dead monitor it just was a it was a dud uh, power thing uh, and then of course I went to cancel my order for the monitor that I didn't need um, and they said it's too late to cancel your order oh, far out so it looks like I'm gonna have an extra computer monitor I suppose it's a good problem to have even if I just keep it spare and that was the, wasn't the only thing I spent money on recently because I also as I mentioned bought myself a new uh, Logitech Brio 4K web camera for making these videos and uh, um, when it arrived it didn't work which was very disappointing so it actually turned up and I bought one second hand 170 bucks I thought I was being clever because a, a, a new one from Amazon was like 250 bucks and I thought yeah sure you know why wouldn't I get one for 170 of course it arrived and it didn't work so you know buy cheap buy twice so uh, I've had to send it back and then in the meantime I figured I'd just buy uh, a new one from uh, Amazon which is what I've done so I'm waiting for that to arrive tomorrow so that was 250 bucks on a camera and then 250 bucks on a monitor $500 um, when I really oughtn't be spending any money at all. So uh, yeah, the pick kit that looks like it's going to cost a few hundred bucks. So I will do that, but uh, not right away. And then of course there's the matter of the RAM for my new electronics workstation, which I use to run MP Lab X. I don't know if you pronounce it MP Lab X or MP Lab 10. I don't know. And. Uh, I forgot what I was telling you about. Anyway, not too important. Let's think about this. So we're making a cable. Um, I'm just taking off the the little uh, twist ties here. There we go. Now, um, what colours will we use? How about uh, green and black I don't know I'm not sure and I'm not sure if I want to use big clips or little clips alright it seems to me like I've got more big clips in stock let me show you actually so here's my big clips and here's my little clips um, and this seems a bit fuller doesn't it so let's use these and uh, I think I'll use green for the earth cable <coughs> and yellow. Green and gold. Australian, like me. So, uh, yeah, green and gold. 
I use green for earth and yellow for the uh, for the active uh, area. Why not? That'll work. So uh, what we're going to do is just cut the alligator leads uh, in half. Um, and then put them on here. Now we're going to need some shrink wrap. Uh, I've got heaps of shrink wrap, but I uh, might just use the stuff from the case here. So, what color would we like to use? I think this this is uh, either not big enough or too big. Oh no, no, this will do. All right, fair enough. So there's probably enough in there for us to use. Now I'm 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 planning to make the lengths asymmetrical. So uh, let me just grab this as well. This is our uh, our, our wire stripper. I don't know if that's the best one to use. I guess we'll see. Um, now. I want the um, end that goes into this end. Yeah. Okay, so the long one's going to be this one. And I want it really quite long. Um, yeah. And then uh, there's going to be an extra one for this guy. Doesn't need to be as long. Why don't we just make this this long? That'll do. That'll do. All right. So uh, I hope we ha haven't made a mistake because it's just about to be too late. Okay, it's too late now. Let's do the end that I don't care so much about first. So we've got some practice, and then when we're good, we can uh, we can do the end that we actually care about. I figured I might as well make a male version and a female version because I've got the the bits and pieces to do that. So. Uh, Let's uh, pop this guy out now. Let's bring him along there. And we'll get the maximum amount possible. It looks like it's going to be not the right tool for the job, but let's see what happens. Eh, hard to complain about that. It pretty much worked. All right. Uh, okay. Let's see what we've got. All right, so the... Uh, the shielding is uh, uh, wrapped around some foil. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. So uh, we'll just uh, take them off there and twist them around here. And we might as well uh, cut off that uh, foil bit. There, I'll just snip those off. I don't like loose wires on my uh, on my mat because they're they're a short circuit waiting to happen. There's just one little wire here. There we go. All right. Now we've got our ground, which we're going to yell uh, make to green. And then we've got the inner bit here. So I'm just going to pop him in there. And let's say there. That looks pretty good to me. All right. So um, we're going to uh, just take these guys uh, and put them in half. go. All right. And let's just snip. 
There we go. All right, we got two for now and two for later. So uh, let's take a bit of insulation off the end of this one as well. Uh, I might just do about half. What do you reckon? It's about half. That'll do. And in we go. And snap. Easy peasy. Just uh, that little bit of insulation out of there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we'll just pop him in there. And snip. And out we go. Okay. <clears throat> now I suppose there's no reason not to use matching colors. So we've got a bit of green and we've got a bit of yellow. So let's put the green on green. And yellow on yellow. I can't tell you how many times I've made a cable and forgot to put the, uh, the heat shrink on. <coughs> now, what are we going to do? I'm going to use yellow and green again, but I'll make them asymmetrical. So um, let's just put the yellow one on here and we'll put the green one on the other side. See if we can just get that in. Yep, that looks like it'll do just fine. All right. Now we're going to um, solder the uh, yellow wire to the center and then the green wire to the ground. So let's just hook those together. First I'm going to twist this guy and then I'm just going to hook this guy over a little bit, I think. Do we even need to hook? I don't know. Um, let's use these guys. Might actually get myself a little bit more insulation off this thing. It's a bit better. And then I'm just going to use my pliers and hook this around like that and I'm gonna uh, feed my now what did we say yellow in the center I feed my wire in through there there we go and then just hook them together like that and oop, I'm I messed it but I think I'm basically on the right uh, tram with this. So let's just uh, try that again. And hook it up. There we go. And let's just twist him around a bit. There we go. Now some solder will hold that together pretty well, I reckon. Just, uh, what are we going to do about that? Now I need some solder. Have I got any? I don't think so. So let's cut off some solder. All right. And can you see everything? I think you can. Right, we're just going to put a bit of solder on this. And that should uh, hold together just, just nicely. So. Here's our soldering iron, and let's heat him up a bit, and then on we go. There we go. Plenty of solder. That looks pretty good to me. Alright, now the, uh, the yellow should go down and over that whole lot. Yep, wonderful. <clears throat> now it's less clear how we should do the next one, isn't it? 
I'm not real sure. I suppose we'll just halve them. So let's uh, let's just hook this like that, and then we'll hook this like that, and let's just join them together and see what happens. And we go there. Oh. There we go, and over and around, that looks fairly good to me. Alright, so let's just uh, solder that guy together, let's see if I can just flip him over this way, that looks a bit better. Alright, now let's... Uh, just drown this guy in lead. I do believe this is leaded solder. A lot of people get a little bit religious about it. I think it's banned in Europe. Sensible Europeans. Apparently the fumes are all flux. The fumes are not lead. So uh, lead melting points really quite high. So it's not lead vapor that's coming off this thing. It's uh, it's not uh, it's not adhering well to that metal at all. Not at all. The uh, the copper is stick sticking together just fine, but the. Uh, the other wire that's part of the grounding on the other bit <coughs> doesn't seem to be uh, joining to that particularly well at all. What will we do? Maybe some flux. And the other thing is I'll, I'm just going to um, increase the temperature on my iron. So it's at, I'm going to put it all the way up to 480. Actually no, 480 is too high. It'll melt the tip. I did put a maximum. Uh, maximum safe temp temperature 830. Uh, Alright, well, I don't want to cook my... So I'll put it up from 350 to 380. Hopefully I don't melt my, uh, my tip. Now this is just some flux. I'm just going to put some flux on here. There we goes. Alright, so a little bit of flux, a little bit more heat, maybe the solder will stick better, let's see. I'm not sure what to tell you about that. Could tell you that that AM flux smells really nice though. Maybe that's why people buy it for the smell. Well, I don't know what to tell you about this joint, except that I think it's probably strong enough. Probably. How hot is that? I'm just going to try uh, just twisting it a little bit as well. Oh, I've got a flashing light here. There we go. Alright, well, I'm just going to just melt that down just one last time, see if I can get it a little bit sort of straighter than it is. There's a big blob of solder there. Uh, I, uh, I don't think that we've done particularly well here at all. Dear me. If anyone knows why I'm having this difficulty with that particular wire, I've never had that before where the wire, like the copper wire takes the solder just fine, but whatever type of wire that is that they're using for the ground, it doesn't seem to be uh, 
take taking up the solder particularly well. Anyway, I'm just going to um, put the shrink wrap over and hope. They do say hope is not a strategy. But I beg to differ. I think that that's the strategy right now. All right, so uh, there we go. Got a little bit of heat on the old... Uh, now I'll keep this part well away while I shrink up these two. So we're just uh, heating up the heat shrink so that it shrinks. So, so far, so good, huh? Um, I don't think uh, there was really any serious gotchas. And uh, we've got our, our yellow here. So, let's just put him together up here. Actually, I'll let that cool down a little bit before I put the heat shrink over it. Um, because we... Uh, we don't want the heat shrink to shrink before it gets over it. There we go. All right, and up we come. Let's send that about to there. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So let's finish our shrink wrapping. Put him there. And there. Pretty good to me. All right. So I suppose the uh, the prudent thing to do would be to uh, buzz this guy out and just make sure that there's connectivity end to end, and also that there's no short circuit uh, on the pins. So let's. Uh, put this guy into uh, continuous mode and we'll put him on beeper uh, how's that there we go so uh, just confirming that's that's beeping now it shouldn't beep when we connect these two one two no beep that's good and we should beep there and not there and we should not beep there and we should be there. All right. I call that mission accomplished. So that's uh, that's what our our joint looks like. Not so bad. Roughly uh, roughly the right length, wouldn't you say? Uh, green for earth and yellow for the antenna. Ripper. So that was our that was our practice one. This is the the male end. Uh, so there we go. One wire. Um, and now all we've got to do is rinse and repeat. So we've got our, uh, our two alligator clips there. And we've got our long piece of, of wire with the female end. So uh, all we have to do is the same thing that we did. And we should be expert at it by now, given that we've got so much experience. So let's just pop him in there. In you go. All right. There we go. I'll just pull him out. There we go. <sighs> now, I really don't know what sort of metal this is, but it's not amenable to soldering at all. Just solder doesn't stick to it. If anyone knows what sort of wire it is, I'd be very happy to hear from you. It's not copper. Or if it is copper, it's got some sort of coating. So that's our, uh, that's our ground wire all sorted over here. And now we've just got to strip our thing again. Let's do that like that. Ripper. 
Now, we said we'd use the green one this time, so let's put our green one on, so we don't forget to do that later on. And we might as well put on our shrink wrap for the alligator clips as well, because as I said, it's just a classic error to forget to put the, uh, the heat shrink on and then solder everything up and then realize that you can't get it on. So we're not going to have that problem today. All right, now we've got to uh, insulate these guys. So a little bit off there. I have to say, these wire cutters have been perfect today, haven't they? They've, uh, they've perfectly trimmed everything that we threw at it. No mistakes, no problems. So let's just twist this guy together. And twist this guy together. Now, what did we say the rule was? Yellow. Yellow in the center. So let's just take that and twist him around. There we go. Little hook. Now let's hook on our yellow wire there and then let's just spin him around for some sort of mechanical um, support. That looks pretty good to me. Let's just solder him together. There we go. Looks fairly good. I'll get the other side a bit as well. That looks fairly good. All right. And we'll uh, just put our shrink wrap over that. Over you go. Ah, no, just a little bit of uh, wire sticking out, and we don't want that. Just uh, squeeze him in a little bit. That looks fairly good. Okay. And let's see what we can do about this. Now we do know that it doesn't like to take the uh, the solder, so let's just uh, give it a little bit of uh, mechanical support there, and then bend that over there like that. Hopefully that that uh, uh, that twisting will help hold the wires together um, because the the solder doesn't seem to stick particularly well to the uh, the silver metal whatever that metal is I don't know. It really doesn't want to go on. Never seen anything like it, frankly. Fascinating. Wow. Well, all I can think to do is try more flux. Some liquid flux over here, might try that. I don't know. Dunno, dunno, dunno. Hopefully I don't damage my mat here.
All right. Well, I'm not sure what to report. Soak up some of that mess. The little solder beads. Again, they're just as bad as the uh, as the loose wires. A little solder bead. Get that in your circuit, it'll ruin your day. Well, it's not pretty, but I think that's probably okay. Just uh, seal it all off. A little bit of uh, shrink wrap. All right, a little bit of leftover solder. I'll throw him in the drawer. Um, and just again, just some little solder balls here. Get rid of that. I'm just cleaning up some old solder. <sighs> okay, now it's just shrink wrap time and then we're done. Let's clean that up a bit. Oh, there's another loose wire. Oh, they're all over the place. Dear me. All right, so heat shrink time. Kinda okay, and uh, let's wait for him to cool down a bit, and then we'll pull this over. There we go. There we go. Pull him on. Over we go. Oh, it's fairly good to me. Fairly good. And then just a little bit more heat for the last bit all right now I'm just going to put my iron back down to 350 so I don't forget to do that next time and uh, we're done with those so they can power off and there we go so now it's just to test the uh, the wire so there should be um, just check that this guy is still beeping he is there should be nothing across this that's good and then there should be you and you and not you and then you and you and not you perfect so we have two cables we got a short one which is alligators to male and we've got a long one which is alligators to female and uh, if I just uh, throw you over here my uh, costume on um, that should go in there and run over here and that's what that's for just so that I can connect that aerial to a project in the lab um, and although I don't expect to have any need of it I have the opposite cable a bit shorter which means that I can plug a male into a female 
if I ever need to do that. So there we go. Um, that was our project for the day. Pretty pretty simple one. Um, I'll do the um, the old book and the new book teardowns soon. So those will be coming out over the next couple of days. Um, and my new camera will arrive tomorrow and then it will be on with the Sensor Robot 20. Um, and I'll do another main show again sooner or later. My mate Max wants me to uh, to do a lab tour, so I, uh, I should do that at some point. I'll uh, take you around and just uh, explain uh, how, how, how everything hangs together. I'm not sure if you can see there, but I've got two Dell Opti, Opti Plexes at the top, and I've actually got two down the bottom as well. So I've got four Dell Opti Plexes there, three of which are, are, are wired up. And I did all that yesterday. Um, I, I set up uh, one for the electronics uh, workbench because I'm going to be running MP Lab X IDE, which is from Microchip, the company that makes the PICs, and they bought Atmel, so the AT Tiny 85s are part of their product portfolio now. 8-bit um, microcontrollers that I'm trying to learn a little bit about. So um, uh, I think that's everything. So stand by for the for the old book review and the new book review, and then we'll keep on keeping on with the Maxitronics 20. So thanks for watching. See you next time.